Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about myasthenia graphis and lambert eaton myasthenia syndrome, but the focus will be on the differences. Before now, I have published several presentations on hypothyroidism, including some clinical hypothyroidism, causes, diagnosis, and of course the treatment. Also, I have published several presentations on Lavard Eaton myasthenic syndrome. The publication on myasthenia gravis will be out in the next few days. So, you can check all this out on my channel, then sit back, let's go through the myasthenia gravis and Lavard Eaton myasthenic syndrome differences right now. The first crisis will consider what is distinguishing between myasthenia gravis and about eating myasthenia syndrome is how common? And the answer is myasthenia gravis is the most common neuromuscular junction transmission disorder, while about eating myasthenia syndrome is very uncommon. How about ocular symptoms? In myasthenia gravis, the ocular symptoms will be transient. We are going to have fluctuating ocular symptoms of ptosis or diplopia. But when it comes to lambent eating myasthenic syndrome, the ocular and bombar muscles are generally spared. Okay? Spared. Only, only mildly involved in situations that they are involved at all. Only very mildly. When it comes to skeletal muscle weakness, in my senior graphics, we'll be dealing with less constant and progressive skeletal muscle weakness. But in number 18 my senior syndrome, it will be slowly progressive and it is going to be proximal leg weakness. How about antibodies? In my senior graphics, Antibodies are directed against the central choline receptor. But in number 18 myasthenic syndrome, antibodies are against voltage gated calcium channel. How about recovery of deep tendon reflexes? In myasthenia gravis, there will be no recovery of deep tendon reflexes on exertion. But the opposite is true. When it comes to lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, because brief muscle activation will lead to recovery of deep tendon reflexes. How about cranial nerves abnormalities? In myasthenia gravis, there will be more cranial nerves abnormalities, while lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome will present with less cranial nerve abnormalities. And with that, I've come to the end of this short presentation. If you rewind and play from the first slide to now, you will be able to pick all the differences between my senior gravis and lambent eating myasthenic syndrome. Thanks for listening. Please remember to share and subscribe so that you can get more of presentations from me immediately they are published. I appreciate it.